Konami has just dropped the biggest bombshell of news I think I've ever seen in the game, at least besides like the March 2012 ban list, because, you know, we've been playing for a long time. We remember stuff like that, but <laughs> it's also really hilarious how they explain this. We got to talk about this. I mean, this is a big deal. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot to get into with this, so just destroy the boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even higher, the 1200 ladder. This is a lot of news that I want to get into, so I'm just going to dive right into it. So LM Jeff Jones, I'm pretty sure that's Jeff Jones on Twitter, posted this uh, tweet, a really long tweet, from Konami shareholders, Konami of Japan specifically, and this was covered by YGO Strats on YouTube, seems like a really cool guy. And essentially what they're talking about <laughs> is making the game easier and explaining <laughs> why people aren't sticking to paper play and like other questions that stockholders had. And to me, it's like the fact that they needed the stockholders to ask this and mention this goes to show me how smooth brain the executives over at Konami are that they aren't realizing that something like Master Duel, aka Master Shits, is garbage and dog water for the game. So I'm going to read you this, uh, the two tweets. We're going to explain along the way, and then we'll discuss. We're going to go with the first post here from Jeff Jones. Konami addressing Japanese stockholders' concerns about the OCG. On June 28th, 2023, Konami held their 50... 55th, uh, he, he, that's not how you do that, but basically 51st annual stockholder meeting. Konami addressed inquiries that have been sent to them in advance by stockholders. The document, blah, 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 can be found over here. It's in Japanese only. Regarding Yu-Gi-Oh! content, we are concerned that two points might negatively affect its growth. First point is that the game doesn't seem to attract new users. When new users who started with Master Duel started playing the OCG, this can also transfer to the TCG, some may stop playing because they cannot make use of their practical knowledge from Master Duel due to the game environment and other factors being different. In fact, it was the case for a player, some players' lack of context here, we have met during an OCG tournament. Wouldn't it be necessary to handle this kind of situation? Gee, I wonder why, because Master Shits is its own garbage game that is not even an official simulator, and Konami advertises it as such. And I think what's hilarious about this is the fact that for the past year now, if you've been keeping up with this channel, I've been talking about how Master Duel is dog water, and the fact that you can buy cards that are more worthless than an NFT, which inherently have no value on their own anyway, because NFTs are dog water garbage that have no value. And the ban list isn't even the real game because you have trash like Max C in the game. Perfect example of this, right? My dad plays, you know, burn decks and, you know, eight axis garbage decks, whatever. So he's been trying to play test for upcoming regionals for the Duelist Nexus season. And what happens when I go on to EDO Pro earlier today? He's got it set for 250 seconds instead of the 400 I use and best of one instead of best of three because he gets aggravated and pissed off when he's trying to play a match and he's not used to side decking because all he does is play master shits all day and uses eight axis garbage decks and thinks cards like owner seal are okay to play and playing nine kaijus is an inconsistent because he's so used to playing this best of one garbage format with max C and weird cards getting banned and it, it's so dog water. Oh, but Konami added a match mode, but you don't get anything for it. And again, back to the ban list, it's a mixture of TCG and OCG plus other stuff, but then you have stuff that's legal in OCG that's not legal in the TCG, and their card pool is like at least three or four sets behind the real life game. They just now added in Labyrinth cards. So of course, when people are used to playing a garbage game that's not actually an official simulator, it's just not, and Konami advertises it as such, it's not. And then they try and play the paper play, and it's like, uh, oh, um, I'm going to use Max C. I'm going to use these combos that I used in Master Duel. Hey, Sugar Boo Bear, it only works in Master Duel because that game is garbage and it's best of one. My dad showed me a replay where he beat Flunder. Uh, and the Flunder player was playing garbage like Solemn Strike, Compulsory Evacuation Device, all these crap cards that you shouldn't be playing in Flunder. But guess what? This player was playing them because they're probably a scrub and they're building their decks for Master Duel. Like, literally, if you're the best player in Master Duel, you're probably a scrub in the real game. I'm being honest with you here. Like, <laughs> 
There's no skill in Master Duel. Like, there's nothing achieving it. Like, what? You're going to get to Platinum. Congratulations. I could not win Nationals. I could be the best player in Master Duel and get into Platinum easily. Like, all you have to do is play Tier or whatever the best deck is, and you just win. Or you play a going second deck, and you just blow them out. Because going second decks are glass cannons in a best-of-one format. Yeah, they're going to be good because the opponent doesn't have a chance to crack back on you. You just have the one chance to crack back on them and win. My dad's like, oh, 8 x is so good. It's good because you're in a best of one scenario. Like, and I'm not trying to crap on my dad here. Like he knows I bust his balls all the time. It's whatever. But it's the fact that he may think he's actually doing well with his deck when in reality, he's not because he's not in a match setting. So the fact that the stockholders had to say, look, we're not seeing people go to paper play because of master shits. What were you thinking was going to happen? Like I remember Kelly Locke. Kelly Locke's a really cool dude. I'm just busting his chops. But he wrote an article on TCG Player that I covered like a year ago where he said, we may even see people go into the the real life game and like win YCSs and stuff and say that it was because of Master Duel. And it's like, are you out of your mind? That's not even the real game. You're playing in this make-believe land of crap that is so irrelevant and garbage that it makes bad players look good and it makes scrubs think that they're actually good. And it's like, no, like you, if you're not playing the real game, you're not doing it right. Like you think you know how to deck build when you actually don't. Like my dad, he loves playing owner seal in his eight axis deck because you can go owner seal and take back your kaiju. And I'm like, why are you going to do that in a match setting when like you get blown blown out by stuff like Eradicator and Spell. He's like, it's my signature. It's so good at Master Duel. And I'm like, Exhibit A. Like, you're getting away with playing garbage cards like Autonomous Action Unit or Owner's Seal. That That's garbage in the real game. And it's hilarious to me. And some decks are even better because a card may be at three when it's at one in the real game. For example, Mind Control's at three in Master Duel when in the real game it's at one. So again, it makes your deck look good when it's actually not. It's dog water. So let's go ahead and move on to the next point. Second point is regarding the poor reception of live streaming of tournament matches. This is a good point as well. Based on players' opinions and opinions found online, it appears that there were many instances where live stream matches of official tournaments became one-sided, and we believe that players losing motivation and new players having a hard time to start playing the game are tied to that issue. If players were able to surrender, which is an action that is currently not allowed by the official rules, both OCG and TCG for feature matches, we believe they would be able to make a strategic choice to start over with the next game, which would also improve the appeal of live streaming, we'd like you to consider this point. So basically, this point is talking about how, like, if you're in a feature match, like at the NAWCQ, when we saw Jeremy Mitchell win uh, with Cash Tira, uh, let's say, for example, he was losing, and like the opponent started popping off and flexing and just making a big board, Jeremy wouldn't be allowed to scoop because he's in a live stream match. So people have really been complaining about this. You know, you should be able to scoop. You know, what if the opponent activates triple tactics talent on you after you play a hand trap and they don't know what you're playing yet? Well, because you're in a feature match, you can't scoop. And it's like, if you could, then the opponent may not know what you're playing. So that's just something to keep in mind. The post goes on to say, answer from Hayakawa Hideki, President and Chief Operating Officer of Konami Digital Inc. Thank you for your valuable feedback. I found it extremely regrettable that players who had started playing the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, note that this name thus implies both OCG and TCG, were not able to do so for long. Regarding the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, we have been revising the forbidden and limited lists as well as changing the rules over a certain period of time. Regarding your opinion about our inability to attract new users, we take that feedback very seriously. As such, we will continue to review the rules, including tournament rules, to make sure more customers can enjoy the game. We will continue to focus on playing environments that will allow more players to enjoy the game for a longer period of time. In addition, not only do we want Yu-Gi-Oh! to be more enjoyable to play, but there's also that valuable perspective that, quote, enjoyable to watch is a very important subject that has been relevant for several years. I think your opinion is absolutely correct, and I will convey it to our company to make the proper considerations for the next live stream. This year's World Championship will be held in Japan for the first time in four years. We also have plans of live streaming it. As such, I hope you will look forward to it. That's the other big point that I wanted to talk about in this because the fact that now the CEO of Konami has said, look, we're making changes to our ban list to make the game easier for new users is insane to me because now you got to look at every ban list coming out through this lens of are they banning it because it's going to help new people get into the game and because it's toxic or just because it's toxic or just because of new users. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens on our next ban list and ban lists moving forward about 
how it is that they're going to change things. And the reason why that this is such a big deal is because when you look back at the, uh, well, I said March 2012, I meant to say March 2011, um, where Kevin Turek put out like a three-part article series talking about how a ban list is made. It makes you wonder, we haven't had any info about how they make a ban list since then. So are they still keeping that stuff in mind? Granted, it's over a decade old, but now keeping this new user thing in place, does this mean that we could see cards come off the ban list like Maxi. I hope to God not, because that would be dog shit. I would literally quit the game if Maxi came back because it's that toxic of a card. And I'm gonna possibly discuss that in a minute, although it should be obvious. But I mean, it drawing a bunch of cards and your opponent's trying to crack back on you, like, yeah, okay, there's my explanation. There you go. So now, like, could we see cards come back to try and get new users in? Because it's like, let's say Pot of Greed. Oh my God, I haven't been playing Pot of Greed since I was a kid. I can go into the real game and play Pot of Greed now. Or, you know, they ban something in Master Duel or bring it back. And, you know, then they bring it into the real game. This has a lot of implications because now you got to wonder, how is it that they're going to get new users in the game? I can tell you right now, it's not through Master Shits, that piece of crap game. When you've got stuff like Max C and you've got Flunder running around at full power and Scrubs building it with Compulse and Psalm striking crap. And now they're just now putting Labyrinth in the game. So now people are going to bitch and complain about Labyrinth. Like, if you look at the Master Duel numbers on Steam and you see the numbers dropping like a rock or like my love life because your boy can't get no girlfriend. Uh, is it a surprise? Like, you had to have a stockholder tell you, look, your numbers are dog crap. Like, what are you expecting, Konami? Like, the game is dog water. The packs don't mean anything. Oh, you can deconstruct it to get extra gems. Woo! Who cares? I don't give a damn. I want all the cards available to me at the start like you could in the DS games. Granted, with a cheat code, but still, it's the fact that you had access to that. It's not that hard. And now, we're seeing possibly they're going to do banless changes based on getting new users in, which is like, okay, cool. But like, how are you going to do that if they can't play with like their max C and pot of greens and all their garbage decks, which is fine. I'll take the free wins at regionals and locals and stuff. And on top of that, they're saying that they're changing the rules to help new users. You know what this makes me think of? This makes me think of mind crush. So for those of you who haven't been playing the game a long time or aren't aware of like official tournament policies, the way that mind crush used to work was that you could activate mind crush and call whatever card you wanted. Like, let's say you're playing Dark World and you call Beaver Warrior. You know the opponent's not playing Beaver Warrior, but you get the free hand knowledge. So you can say, okay, they're playing, you know, they've got Sky Striker Engage, Afterburner, Sprite Blue. Like, you can see their whole hand. Oh, I called it wrong. I got to discard a card from my hand, pimp. So you dish a Dark World and then you get the plus. Now, with the new tournament policies, your opponent can just say, like, let's say you call Sky Striker Engage. Oh, I don't have it. Well, I just get screwed then, then you got to ditch a card. Or like if you see them search something, even if you're not playing Dark World, you go Mind Crush, call it, and then you would ditch it and then also get to see their hand. Now the opponent could just bullshit lie to you. Hey, uh, Mind Crush, call Sky Strike Engage. I don't have it. Draw. Shuffles hand. Oh, there's the Engage. I drew it. Yeah, okay, Sugar Boo Bear. Like, the card's dog water now. Like, I remember Mind Crush, I think, used to be at one. And then they changed the rule on it. So now it's like, did Konami change this? because they want to make the game easier for new users, which on top of that's like, how is it easier for new users? We got fusion summons, link summons, synchro summons, pendulum summons, out the butthole summons. Like we have all these different summons. So like what, are you gonna add another summon to the game? Be like, oh, it makes it easier for users. <laughs> it's like, no, absolutely not. We don't need any more summons. Or what are they gonna do? Expand the extra deck to 20, 25, 30 cards? Like how it used to be back in the day where you could have any number and then they're gonna be like, well, it's easier for new users because now they don't have to consider, oh, hey, do I play Abyss Dweller or not? Do I play, I don't know, Shadow Mosquito or not? Do I play Gigantic Sprite or not? There's no limit, let's play them all. And it's like, I'm not saying that they are gonna do this, but it's where my mind goes because it's like, what do you consider to be easier for new users? Whether it's a ban list, a, a mechanic, a tournament policy that you change, whatever. Like, the possibilities are endless to this. And the fact that they mentioned the ban list in this, uh, completely, at least for me, just throws everything in a loop. Because now it's like, you really got to think, are they going to ban this 
even though it may not be that good of, of a ban to help new users. Like Curios the Light Sworn Dominion should have been banned ages ago and then they did it on a recent list even though it really wasn't a problem anymore. Is that because it was still a problem that they just didn't deal with? Or is it because that they were trying to help new users get into the game? When it's like, if you're starting off with Master Duel, you're already at a disadvantage anyway because you're not playing the real game. You don't know what's going on. If you want to play the real game and actually get good, you've got to play on Dueling Book, EDO Pro, whatever. So I'm shocked. I know I'm kind of rambling here at this point, but we hardly ever get information from these execs. We have to pull teeth or stockholders have to kick them in the ass and say, this is what's going on. Why are you not paying attention to it? And then finally, the CEO says something. So I'm glad that Konami has mentioned this. I'm very interested to see what goes on in the future now, whether it be a ban list, new products, or rules that they change to the game. We got to prepare our anuses. We got to prepare our ultra balls because... I mean, yeah, get new users into the game. I'll beat all the scrubs at my locals, but you, you got to shut down Master Duel. You got to put out a real game with a real balance. They, they got to fix Master Duel. They got to make it like the TCG. TCG, OCG balance, match mode where you can actually earn something. You're, you're doing nothing but making scrubs in the game. And I think my dad's a perfect example. I love my dad to death, but when he gets aggravated with the game and just wants to do best of one, I think that comes more from the fact he just can't play Mystic Mind anymore, but I think he's also kind of tired of the game anyway. But still, my point stands. So guys, let me know what you think about this news down in the comments below. I hope you all also enjoyed that bit of a rant. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.